four patients. Okay, all of them have a priority. They have a problem. Every patient is a priority. But who do you see first? Who do you give your time to first? Who you don't have time with? That is all what the prioritization question is about. All of them are prioritized patients. But there's one you need to intervene as soon as possible. So you have to run them and say, I need to see you first before this one. And that is what the key is. What you do is to be sharp. You have to be sharp when you're doing this kind of phase. You have to be sharp. And how to be sharp is to look for a breathing issue, look for electrolytes, which is potassium, magnesium, calcium, okay, in sodium. You have to look for shock issue and sepsis. You have to look for hypothermia, hypoglycemia. You got to look for airway issue. You got to look for neurological problem, which is lethargic. And you got to look for pain that is going to cause the individual life, limb, and eyesight. And sometimes you don't see these things, but it's the same thing. They've changed it in a way. They're giving you certain buzzwords that will lead you to that. So how do we be sharp? We look at a question and see what it has for us. So we have a client post thyroidectomy with serum with uh, calcium of 8.9. So we had thyroid surgery and the calcium is 8.9. Every time somebody has surgery for thyroid, the parathyroid hormones, which secrete PTH to regulate calcium, may go down because they may be damaged or they may be disturbed during the process of removal of the thyroid. The calcium is expected to go low the first few days. It's 8.9. It's low, but does the patient have any symptoms? It's not that low either. The patient does not have any symptoms. It just is calcium is 8.9. I need to see this patient, but I have time, and I have to be sharp. The electrolyzed 8.9 is there, but I have to be sharp. So for now, we'll keep the you, but I don't think you are a priority. A client post thyroidectomy with sore throat. Guess what? He has his neck incision in his neck and they remove the thyroid. You expect them to have sore throat. It can go into irritate your esophagus. So this is also an expected finding, not a B sharp finding. So these two are not a problem. The client post thyroidectomy, the same thing as thyroid surgery. I intentionally keep on hammering the key words that they will put there that can screw you up and you start thinking, oh, I saw thyroidectomy, therefore I have to pick it with dysphagia. Well, dysphagia is when they swallow, they have some pain. It's because of the sore throat. I mean, when they like, there's nothing telling me they have airway problem. Anybody that who has thyroidectomy for your test, for your exams, Two things, thyroidectomy, look for hemorrhage and look for airway issue, airway, okay? Not the breathing, the airway, something is blocking the tube. Dysphagia, it's just pain when they try to swallow. There's no evidence of bleeding and there's no evidence of an airway issue. A client post thyroidectomy with hoarse voice, yes. The voice is not becoming hoarse. It's something is pushing on the trachea and then it making the vocal cord is in trouble. This is dangerous than dysphagia, than sore throat, than calcium of 8.9. And that's how you analyze who do you see first. They all have thyroidectomy, but one is hoarse. The other one has dysphagia. The other one has sore throat. The other one has calcium 8.9. This patient has no symptoms, sore throat, we can take care of. Dysphagia will slow down when you drink. But honestness is an airway. There is airways being compromised. Therefore, we see this patient first. And that's the key. That's how you analyze the questions. Second one. The same thing you can do. Who do you see first? Well, a client post 
abdominal aortic aneurysm in urine output is 30 cc an hour. Even if you don't know, you know that 30 cc an hour is normal, it's average. But when your patient have abdominal aortic aneurysm, the kidney is right there. And then due to the clamping, when you occlude the vessel to do the surgery, the, the, the kidney can get injured and you're going to renal failure. 30 cc an hour, I will take it any time or day. Therefore, this is okay. I don't need to see this patient. A client with CHF, okay, and five pound weight gain in eight days. This, you have to use your content, okay? So you know when you have CHF, you can gain pounds. If you gain anything, three pounds in two days, right? or you gain three to five pounds in one week, yeah, you got to see the doctor. This guy just gained five pounds in eight days. It's more than a week. A single day can make a difference. Therefore, eight days is fine. I don't need to see them. I have time. They may be getting into CHF, but I have time with them. A client with A and C of 200 and a temperature of 101. What is ANC? It's absolute neutrophil count. And this determines your ability to fight infection. Usually it's like 2,500. You want it to be above it. Some people on chemotherapy can go up to 1,000. But anything 500 or less, that's your risk of infection is high. So 500 or less, your risk of infection is high. Therefore, you have to do something. This is immunocompromised patient. A temperature of 101 is sepsis. That is B-sharp moment. Therefore, this patient needs to be seen. A client with hemoglobin A1C of 9 and a random glucose of 9, 200. This is what they always try to distract you. This is a distractor. Hemoglobin A1C, you want the normal to be less than 7, right? But it reflects what? Three months good glycemic control. So you want to control your blood glucose for three good months before we can see evidence of that. So if I see a patient, they give me a patient with hemoglobin A1C, even if it's 500, I don't care. They tell me for the last three months, they've not been doing well. They've not been doing what they're supposed to do. Now I'm telling me the last three months, they have not been following their glucose level. That's why when we get a random glucose, it's 200. They don't need to die from it. We just need to educate them, change their medication, and then hope for a better. So this patient needs teaching, but it's not my priority at this time. Even though his glucose is 200, don't get distracted from it. It's not the person who is in shock and in sepsis, it's that one. And on B sharp, we don't talk about hyperglycemia. We talk about hypoglycemia. This patient is hyperglycemia. Therefore, it's not my problem. So the one you need to see is a client with A and C of 200, and a temperature of 101. That is sepsis, and you need to intervene as soon as possible. And this is how you prioritize the patient with the question being asked. Who do you see? Remember, everybody is a priority. But the one you see first is the one who does not have time. Take care of yourself. Keep charging and subscribe to the channel. If you have not done so, share this video with your friends who will benefit from them and invite them to the channel. Take care and have a good day.